Today I'm flipping science, we're going to talk about cells. So in today's video, we're going to look at these science understandings. We're going to look at how living things are distinguishable from non-living things. We're going to talk about cell theory, and we're going to talk about the cell membrane briefly. So today we're going to look at cells. Cells are very important because they make up you. So uh, the bits inside you that are living, that make you up, that give you your personality, that cause disease, they're all made up of cells. Um, when we start looking at cells, we're going to talk about them as being the kind of the fundamental building block of biology. Um, everything that's living is made up of cells. So if you can think of something that's alive, it's made of cells. It could be made of one cell, it could be made up of trillions of cells like you. Um, cells are the smallest component of an organism that we say are living. So we need to define what life is so that we can explain that. So I've got some pictures down here um, that represent the features of living things. So this first one here it is reproduction. So something that's alive needs to be able to reproduce or at least have the opportunity to reproduce. Let's have a look at this one. We've got a little cell saying, oh, we're talking about there responding to the environment. There we go. So responding to stimuli in the environment. Now, um, not all cells will scream oh when you poke them, but uh, they might respond to chemicals in the environment. They might uh, be able to follow uh, other organisms to use them as food um, using chemicals in the environment. They have to respond to the situation that they're in. This one here, we've got a cell eating a hamburger and then it's giving out some chocolate which I'm making it look like waste. So they need to eat and excrete, they need to take in energy and excrete waste products. And the last one here we have a uh, plant cell, theoretically it's taking in uh, light energy and some chemicals and turning them into chemical energy. And the other way around as well, it's taking chemical energy and you can turn them into different forms of energy like movement or heat or so on. So a living thing needs to be able to do those things. Uh, what's interesting is something like a virus, which there's a bit of a question as to whether it's a living thing. It itself can't reproduce independently, but when it infects a cell, it can. So we're going to look at viruses a bit later on too. So just restating, a cell is a living thing, and all living things can do these. So the cell is the smallest thing that can do these living things. So it can reproduce, a cell can respond to stimuli in the environment can transform energy into different forms and also take in uh, compounds and excrete waste products. Now in biology we like to categorise things. Um, so we have two categories of organism that we started with a really just basic level. We have unicellular and multicellular. So if something's unicellular, uni means one, it's made up of one cell. So down here we have a paramecium, I think, that's made up of one cell. This can do everything that we talked about before. So it can take in energy, it can eat, it can reproduce, but it's made of just one cell. Over here we have multicellular, so we've got a kitty. A kitty is made up of lots and lots of cells, so multi means lots, so lots of cells. And then you have some weird ones, and what I like about biology is there's always weird organisms that kind of fit somewhere in between lines that you draw. So here we have some algae. Now each cell here acts completely independently of all the cells around it, but it is joined to the other cells. So does that mean it's unicellular stuck together? Or is it multicellular that acts like lots of unicellular organisms? That's one of the fun things about biology. There's always weird things that pop up. So we're going to start talking about cell theory. Cell theory talks about um, cells and why they're important and how they come about. Um, so the fundamental idea is that cells are the structural and functional units of life. So when we're talking about structural, they make up what living things are. So your hand is made up of lots of cells. They're also functional. They do the jobs of the living things. So the cells in your hand are taking in chemicals and changing them around and reproducing and so on. So they both have a structural role in terms of making you up. They're also functional in terms of doing the chemistry that we call life. So they're both structural and functional. Another idea from cell theory is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So you start off as one cell that divides into two, then those two cells divide into four, and so on and so on. And eventually you end up with you. But the cells in your body came from other cells previously. So the sperm and the ova that make you up came from your mother and father. And if you trace that back, then those sperm and eggs from their grandparents came from them as well. And you can go back and back and back. Another fundamental idea of cell theory is that all cells have to contain some hereditary material, at least at some stage in their life. 
Um, what that means is hereditary is uh, information that's being passed on. So for us, we're looking at DNA. Um, in, if we look at uh, viruses and consider them living somehow, some people do, then they contain either DNA or RNA. So these are chemicals that contain information that are passed on from one generation to the next. Um, you have about three metres of DNA in every single cell in your body, except for some cells that break down the DNA once they're produced. So red blood cells, for example, don't have a nuclei. The DNA kind of floats around there as the little bits that make it up. So in a complex cell like your animal cell over here or a very simple cell like a bacterium down here, they both contain information that's passed on from one cell to the next, and that's the DNA. Just one more thing we're going to talk about is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is the boundary between the inside and the outside of the cell. So in an animal cell over here, we can see the cell membrane. Everything that's on the inside here is inside the cell. Everything that's outside is outside the cell. Um, the cell membrane is important for separation, but it's also a very complicated structure. Um, it's got proteins floating in it. It's um, made up of essentially oils that arrange themselves into two layers. It's a very complicated structure and we're going to look at it in detail a bit later on. So the last bit I'm going to talk about is the science as a human endeavour. How do we figure all this stuff out about cells? And it comes down to microscopes. Cells are very, very small. So you need an instrument that allows you to see very, very small cells. So today we'll just talk about Hook. So this is Hook over here. Um, there's a lot of scientists that kind of developed cells and cell theory by using microscopes. We're just going to talk about Hook. Um, Hook used a very, very simple microscope, which is essentially a drop of glass um, suspended and held by a couple of bits of metal. And using that, he looked at structures, and he got decent magnifications from that. Um, he drew this picture, and this is of cork, so a cork tree, and he looked at the cells from the cork. And he noticed that uh, they looked like little boxes that he thought looked like the cells that monks live in, and that's where we get our word cells from. So the word cells comes from Hook interpreting a picture of some cells underneath the microscope, and that's where we get our word. The development of biology is very closely linked with the development of the microscope because as the microscope developed in terms of its abilities, we saw smaller and smaller structures, and cells are very small. So if you have better microscopes, you can see smaller things. So today on Flipping Science, we looked at uh, cells, cells being living, uh, unicellular, multicellular organisms, and we talked about cell theory. So that's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.